this training program, we'll be discussing the continuous fuel injection system, which is often referred to as simply CIS. We'll look at the operation of the system only. Diagnosis and adjustment procedures will be discussed in another program. As in all fuel injection systems, the continuous injection system is made up of a number of individual components. We'll look at each of these components in a moment. Before we do, though, let's take a minute to identify the Mercedes-Benz vehicles that utilize this system. We'll be studying the continuous injection system in the configuration used on vehicles manufactured from 1976 through 1979. The system was introduced on the M117 model V8 in 1976. So you'll find it on 1976, 77, 78, and 79 vehicles equipped with the M117 V8. 1977 through 1979 vehicles equipped with the 6.9 liter V8 also use the CIS system. In 1977, the continuous injection system was applied to the M110 six-cylinder engine. So you'll also find the system on 1977, 78, and 79 vehicles equipped with this engine. The continuous injection system was modified in 1980 to incorporate the Lambda Sond oxygen sensing system. All of these modifications were discussed in the Education for Excellence training program entitled Introduction 1980 Models. So keep in mind that the continuous injection system discussed in the program you're viewing now was used only in 1976 through 1979 applications. Now let's look at this system in detail. There are a couple of important operating principles that are unique to the continuous injection system. First, the injectors continuously inject fuel into the intake ports. Secondly, the amount of fuel supplied to the injectors is metered in direct proportion to the quantity of air drawn by the engine. With these two principles in mind, let's see how the system's individual components function. This is the mixture regulator assembly, which is actually the brain of the system. This is the component that measures the air and meters the fuel accordingly. As you can see, the mixture regulator assembly consists of two sub-assemblies, an airflow sensor, and a fuel distributor. The airflow sensor contains a sensor plate this sensor plate measures the airflow upstream from the throttle plate. The principal components of the airflow sensor are the air venturi, sensor plate, and sensor plate lever. As you can see, the lever pivots on a bushing. A balance weight compensates for the weight of the lever and sensor plate. The sensor plate is positioned in the air venturi by the incoming air. More air is allowed to flow around the sensor plate as the plate is forced downward in the venturi. The position of the sensor plate is thus a measure of the airflow and is therefore used to determine the quantity of fuel supplied. Now, let's look at the fuel distributor. The role of the fuel distributor is to meter fuel to the injection nozzles based on input from the airflow sensor. This metering action is accomplished by a fuel control plunger, which is located in the fuel distributor. The control plunger rests on a roller that's mounted on the air sensor lever. As the air sensor plate moves downward in response to increased airflow, the fuel control plunger is raised.
The control plunger fits into the metering barrel and opens or closes fuel slots to increase or decrease fuel delivery in response to sensor plate movement. In the illustration on the left, the control edge of the plunger is slightly raised. The metering slot is opened a small amount. On the right, the plunger is completely raised. The metering slot is fully open. A pressure regulator valve is positioned adjacent to each metering port. These valves eliminate the effects of fluctuations in fuel supply pressure. They do this by maintaining a fixed pressure difference between the fuel pressures at the inlet and outlet sides of the metering ports. The pressure regulator valves are diaphragm valves that compare the fuel supply pressure, which is called primary pressure, with the pressure after the metering port. The two pressures act on opposite sides of a spring-loaded diaphragm. The spring is calibrated to hold the diaphragm away from the fuel outlet, just enough to maintain the desired pressure difference. Fuel lines connect the pressure regulator valves in the fuel distributor to the fuel injection nozzles. Fuel is injected continuously when the metering port is open and the mixture is drawn into the cylinder when the intake valve opens. Some operating conditions require a temporarily richer mixture, such as cold engine operation or when the engine is placed under load. In the continuous injection system, the component that provides a richer mixture is the warm-up full load enrichment compensator. The enrichment compensator exerts a hydraulic counterpressure on the top of the control plunger. This counterpressure, which is called control pressure, acts against the movement of the air sensor plate. So, in addition to a fuel circuit, there is also a control circuit. The two systems are separated by an orifice, which supplies the control circuit. The enrichment compensator provides a pressure which varies with engine temperature and load conditions. This pressure acts on the top of the control plunger. Excess fuel flows from the enrichment compensator back to the fuel tank. Here, the engine is cold or under heavy load. The enrichment compensator has reduced the counterpressure on the control plunger. The airflow sensor plate has thus dropped lower, raising the control plunger. Now, a richer mixture is supplied to the engine. Let's examine the enrichment compensator more closely. Here's how the control pressure is metered during the warm-up period. A bimetal strip compresses a valve spring. This allows a diaphragm valve at the outlet opening to move away from the opening, reducing control pressure. When the engine is running, a heating element around the bimetal strip is switched on. As the strip warms up, it gradually releases the valve spring retainer. When the engine is sufficiently warmed, the outlet opening is reduced to the point where the control pressure on the fuel plunger is returned to normal. As we've said, the enrichment compensator also enriches the mixture when the engine is under load. This function is performed by the diaphragm depicted here which divides the compensator into two chambers. The upper chamber is connected to the intake manifold vacuum. The lower chamber is vented to atmosphere.
Under idle conditions or light load, the high vacuum present in the upper chamber overcomes the spring's tension and the diaphragm is moved upward. The fuel outlet opening remains reduced, so normal control pressure is exerted on the fuel control plunger. When the engine is under heavy load, the spring tension is stronger than intake manifold vacuum. The diaphragm is forced downward and the fuel outlet opening is enlarged. Control pressure is reduced and a richer mixture results. The fuel supply system begins with the fuel tank and includes the suction damper, the fuel pump, a pressure compensating valve, the fuel filter, an accumulator, and a primary system pressure regulator. The fuel filter, electric fuel pump, and suction damper are located at the rear of the vehicle. The fuel accumulator, which is also located at the rear of the vehicle, requires a brief explanation. The fuel accumulator can best be described as a storage tank for fuel pressure. It consists of a large diaphragm, which is under spring tension. Fuel pump pressure compresses the diaphragm and spring when the pump is running. When the pump shuts off, the fuel in the primary system is held under the pressure of the compressed spring-loaded diaphragm in the accumulator. The pressure is trapped by the closed primary system regulator valve, the pressure compensating valve, and the fuel pump's non-return check valve. The pressure compensating valve, which we've discussed briefly, was installed on vehicles manufactured after February of 1979. The pressure compensating valve is located at the inlet to the fuel filter and acts as a pressure operated check valve. When the fuel pump runs, the valve closes and the system pressurizes in the normal manner. When the fuel pump is not running, the hot fuel in the system cools. As it cools, it also decreases in volume, which may create a vacuum in the fuel supply system. This could cause an over-enrichment condition during starting. If a vacuum forms, the pressure compensating valve opens and vents the system. We also briefly mentioned the primary system pressure regulator valve. As you can see, this valve is an integral part of the fuel distributor. The pressure regulator is a spring-loaded relief valve that maintains fuel pressure at a specified value. Excess fuel is returned from the pressure regulator valve back to the fuel tank by way of a return circuit. Here's another important component of the continuous injection system. This safety switch ensures that the fuel pump will run only if the starter motor is actuated or the engine is running. The safety switch is bypassed during starting. The safety switch controls the electrical circuits to the fuel pump and compensator. When the ignition is turned on, but the engine isn't running, the air sensor plate is closed. The contacts of the safety switch are also closed, and the operating relay is held in its open position. The circuits to the fuel pump and compensator are interrupted. When the engine is running, the sensor plate moves down, opening the contacts of the safety switch. The operating relay 
completes the circuits to the fuel pump and the heating coil in the enrichment compensator. The pressure damper is a simple but important component of the system. The pressure damper is positioned in the control circuit between the fuel distributor and the enrichment compensator. It acts as a shock absorber in the control pressure circuit. It dampens high pressures, which could place unnecessary stress on the fuel distributor and enrichment compensator. Each cylinder has one injection nozzle. The nozzles are mounted in the intake ports of the cylinder heads. The nozzle utilizes a pulse valve, which ensures that even minimal amounts of fuel are atomized to an extremely fine degree. A conical filter is mounted in the nozzle to prevent dirt particles from reaching the nozzle tip. Vehicles equipped with a continuous injection system are also equipped with an auxiliary air valve. This component was also used in conjunction with previous injection systems. The auxiliary air valve is a thermostatic valve that controls an air circuit that bypasses the throttle plate. This circuit provides the additional air required during the engine warm-up period. The principal component of the cold start system is the cold start valve, which sprays fuel into the intake manifold during cranking. The cold start valve is operated by a thermo time switch. Below 59 degrees, the thermo time switch grounds the cold start valve. Now additional fuel is injected to aid cold starting. And that completes our look at the continuous injection system. Be sure to hang on to the reference book that accompanies this film. All of the information contained in the film has been included in the reference book to provide you with a quick reference source in the future. For test